What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? I'm the Godless Engineer, and I critically analyze apologist claims to give you the best arguments and information so that you can stand up and use your voice. I'm sending you, like, so far, a million article uh, interviews with both Buzz Aldrin and yes. the other one. Do it. And this girl says, what was the scariest moment? And he goes, there was no scary moment because it didn't happen. It could have been scary, but it wasn't because it didn't happen. So he's gotten old, and now he, like, slurs on his thing. Yeah. Everything. Dude. Yeah. So I think it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go on a massive deep dive is what's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go on a serious deep dive. I center conspiracies all the time. Wee -oo, wee -oo. So Kim Kardashian just claimed that she doesn't believe that we landed on the moon due to uh, Buzz Aldrin clips and a bunch of other conspiracy theories. Today, we're going to fuck around and find out why she's literally wrong about everything. Oh, and Kim did not just stop there at the Buzz Aldrin interview clips. In her full statement prompted by her producer, she laid out multiple reasons as to why she thinks the moon landings were faked. First, she reiterates her claims about Buzz Aldrin, mentioning that they didn't go to the moon. Second, she mentions that the flag was wa waving, even though there's no atmosphere on the moon. Third, she claims the footprints in photos don't match the boots that are in the museum. And finally, she claims there's no stars that are visible in the moon landing photographs. These are some of the most common moon landing conspiracy theories out there. So let's break down every single one, starting with what Buzz Aldrin actually said. And to do that, I reached out to Craig from Fight the Flat Earth. He's going to be explaining what actually happened in those clips of Buzz Aldrin. Take it away, Craig. Okay, so it turns out that Kim Kardashian is telling everyone that Buzz Aldrin admitted we didn't go to the moon. Kim, please, you once thought a 35 minute flight was international travel. Stay in your lane. Here is what actually happened. The clip that she's sharing is obviously edited, like aggressively edited season 12 Kardashian family drama edited. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not uh, an eight year old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and and that's the way it happened. And and if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. So in the future, if we want to keep doing something, we need to know why. But that's the clip. That's what conspiracists cling to, like it's a designer handbag on Black Friday. They cut it there and act like he's confessing. But context matters. And the context is he's talking about not going back, not, not ever actually going. It's literally 10 minutes of Buzz describing being on the moon. One question about not returning, Buzz saying he knows why we didn't return. End of story. He did not say we didn't go. He did not hint at it. He did not imply it. He did not wink at the camera like he's launching a new contour palette called Moonfake by Skims. Kim Kardashian saw a three second TikTok edit and thought she'd cracked a NASA conspiracy. <laughs> Bless her, she, she tried. Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon. Buzz Aldrin left retro reflectors out there we still use today. <laughs> Buzz Aldrin punched a conspiracy theorist in the face. You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black if I ever thought of it. Saying I misrepresented myself. Get away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. That's, that's, that's fun to watch. Meanwhile, the only thing Kim has ever launched into space is uh, Kanye's sanity. If you're not subscribed to Craig from Fight the Flat Earth, you really should be. So you should probably go and correct that shit now. Did you already notice a pattern with the clips of Buzz Aldrin? Conspiracy theorists rely on deceptive editing and the removal of context in order to make their points. They show you a 10 second clip that's taken out of context and expect you not to look at the entire interview. That's a disingenuous as fuck tactic and you should call it out every time they use it. And this isn't unique to the Buzz Aldrin claim. It's the same tactic that's used in the other points that Kim brings up. They present something that looks kind of suspicious at first glance, but then falls apart when you check the fuller context. So let's go through the rest of her claims and watch that pattern repeat. The flag appears to wave because of inertia, not wind. When the astronauts planted that flag, they had to twist and turn it into the lunar surface. That motion caused the fabric to move. And because there's no atmosphere to create 
create resistance in order to slow down the flag's waving, the flag continued to wave after they were done messing around with it. NASA even tested this in vacuum chambers prior to the moon landing. The flag moves exactly the same way. Next, the footprints on the lunar surface don't match the museum boots because the astronauts wore overshoes on the lunar surface. The boots on display in museums are the inner pressure suit boots. That would be what they wore inside the spacecraft. The actual lunar overshoes were left on the lunar surface when they left. This was to reduce the overall weight for the return trip. And you can still see them from mission photographs sitting on the lunar surface. Different boots, different prints. Solved. No stars are visible from the lunar surface due to the exposure setting of the camera. The lunar surface is incredibly bright. It reflects direct sunlight with no atmosphere to diffuse it. To properly expose the astronauts on the lunar surface, the cameras needed fast shutter speeds and narrow apertures. Those settings make stars, which are incredibly dim by comparison, invisible in the photos. It's the same reason you can't see stars in the sky in brightly lit cities at night. The environment's natural lighting simply just drowns out any of the stars. This is basic photography. Next, here's a quick bonus. Kim said that there is, quote, no gravity on the moon. This is just factually fucking wrong. The moon has gravity specifically one-sixth the gravity of Earth. That's why the astronauts bounce on the moon and why the lunar dust falls back to the lunar surface in the videos. If there truly was no gravity on the moon, then the astronauts would just simply float away from the lunar surface. The moon's gravity is exactly what we would expect from an object of its mass. But here's the thing. Even if you debunk every single conspiracy theory about the moon landing that there is, the real proof about the moon landing comes from multiple different lines of evidence, and they all point to the same conclusion. For instance, we left mirrors on the moon so that we could measure the distance between the Earth and the moon down to the millimeter, and scientists all over the globe can bounce lasers off of those reflectors. Anyone with the right equipment can verify this. We also brought back 842 pounds of of lunar rock, and they've been studied by geologists all over the world. Their composition, age, and isotopic signatures are completely different from any of the rocks on Earth, and we couldn't have faked this with the technology at the time. There was also a lot of third-party tracking for the moon land. Countries like Australia, Spain, and the UK tracked the Apollo missions independently. The Soviets, our Cold War enemies, monitored every transmission and never disputed it. If we had faked that shit, they would have been the first ones to call it out with the receipts. There's also photographic evidence from other nations. Japan, India, and China have all sent probes that have been able to photograph the Apollo mission landing sites. These pictures show the descent stages, equipment, and even astronaut footpaths that are still visible. There's also a technological consistency. Their Saturn V rocket command modules and landers, they were all built by thousands of contractors. They had paper trails, blueprints, and physical hardware that still exist in museums today. Not to mention the fact that there's still ongoing communication with the lander equipment. We can still communicate with the equipment that was left on the moon, including seismometers that have actually recorded moonquakes since we landed there. Not to mention the fact that there were over 400,000 people that worked on the Apollo missions from different countries. Keeping that many people silent about a hoax for 50 plus years is statistically impossible. This is called concilience. That's when multiple independent lines of evidence converge on one particular conclusion. In this instance, it's the fact that we landed on the fucking moon. Kim Kardashian would have to explain away not just one suspicious detail, but dozens of unrelated facts from multiple countries, scientific disciplines, and verification methods. And they all confirm that we went to the fucking moon. That's not how hoaxes work. That's how reality works. Now, here's the thing. If you bring up these facts to a conspiracy theorist in real life, they might attempt to just shift the goalposts. Okay, but what about this no claim here? That's the game. They'll just throw out 10 more theories, hoping that one of them sticks and stumps you. And suddenly you're exhausted trying to debunk every single minute detail that they can come up with. It's just an endless stream of nonsense that can wear you down. But here's what I want you to understand. Your job is not to convince someone that is that emotionally invested in their own conclusion. Your job is to show the other people that are watching that conversation that evidence matters 
and how critical thinking works. When you're in a conversation, you're not looking to convince the conspiracy theorist away from their conspiracy theory. You're debunking their bullshit for the audience's benefit. Whoever might be reading or watching, or anybody that could come along in your conversation and be convinced by the endless stream of bullshit that the conspiracy theorist would throw out there. They need to have these facts ready for them, and they need to be shown how you can easily refute the endless stream of bullshit shit by just looking at the fuller context, actually researching the information, finding the complete interview. And if you present these things calmly and factually, you will come across as the more convincing party rather than the highly emotional conspiracy theorist that's dead set on his idea being correct. If someone is wanting to believe that the moon landing is fake, there is pretty much nothing that you can say that will convince them away from that. They have to be the ones to accept the actual information. They have to be the ones to convince themselves away from their bad conclusion. You're not only equipping yourself to recognize this misinformation, this bad information, this the logical fallacies in their argument, but you're also equipping others to see that as well. You're educating people on what evidence-based thinking actually looks like. I'd say that that's the real win, and honestly, that's enough. Well, heathens, that's gonna be it for the video today. If you will, please go down below, let me know what you think about any of the moon landing conspiracies that Kim Kardashian brought up, or any of the information that I presented here. Let me know down below. And hey, if you can, there's a video on the screen right here. Definitely hit up that video and just give that a watch real quick. It'd really help us out here. But before you go, don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.